The worst injury I've ever seen as a doctor? Here's the story of the fractured pen 15. It's 3 a.m. in the emergency room and I'm just about to go for my break when an embarrassed young man turns up in excruciating pain with his girlfriend. He simply says, I think I've broken my penis. When I examine him, I notice that his male appendage is bent, swollen, and purple from all the bruising. This was the aubergine sign, a classic sign of a penile fracture. I take a brief history from him to find out why it happened. He tells me he was enjoying a particularly energetic session of bedroom gymnastics and heard a loud pop. I explain to him that the consequence of his aggressive bedroom antics means that the tunica albuginea, the fibrous sheath, which covers the spongy tissue of the sausage has torn leading to bleeding. I don't know what happened to him, but I do know that he was listed for emergency surgery the same morning. Patients who don't have early treatment often suffer with permanent curvature and erectile dysfunction. Three health signs you should never ignore. Okay, so we all get eye floaters and that's completely normal. But if you suddenly start seeing way more floaters in your field of vision or flashes, go see a doctor ASAP. If you start feeling full just after eating small amounts, or you notice a change in your appetite over several weeks for no apparent reason, go get it checked out. If you notice lots of bruises turning up all over your body without any obvious physical injuries, go get this investigated. Doctors are terrible at diagnosing this. You're looking inside the female pelvis. That is the uterus, but what is that? Endometrial tissue. In endometriosis, cells similar to the one lining the womb can grow elsewhere in the body. For example, the bladder, the bowel, the ovary. These cells can react to the menstrual cycle each month and bleed. But unlike a period, there's no way for this blood to leave the body. This causes inflammation and scar tissue formation, which can lead to infertility, chronic pain, and even bowel blockage. On average, it can take seven to eight years to diagnose it. This is the story of my longest and probably worst ever shift as a doctor. During my first month as a freshly minted baby doctor, I was on call for medicine. The job involved taking bloods, reviewing sick patients on the ward, that kind of jazz. At 9pm, after 13 hours of unrelentless bleep, it's time to finally hand over to the night team. I'm tired and hangry and didn't have time for lunch. Anyway, it turns out the night doctor calls in sick at the last minute. They ask if I can stick around and do the night shift. That's 24 hours on call without sleep. They said they'd pay me for the extra shifts I'd do and looking at my student debt, I thought, yeah, why not? Error. Sleep deprivation and hunger are a deadly duo. The canteen was closed, so I scrounged the hospital at night for food. No amount of hospital jelly or biscuits could fill me up. I descended into delirium at 4 a.m. and despite energy drinks and coffee, I was a zombie in the morning handover. I knew I wasn't safe to drive home and I'd heard too many scary stories about junior doctors getting in accidents after a night shift. I needed to sleep and there was no bed. I slept upright in a hospital canteen for five hours. I drove home, slept for about 14 hours and then came back in for another shift. 